everybody, Cosmic Comics here, back with another video. I hope you're having a good day, a better week, and more importantly, you're stealing from your boss. Also, thanks to the patrons, it's because of y'all, these videos are as smooth as possible, like butter. So let's get into the video. So, recently, McDonald's has been talked about quite a bit online, uh, specifically about the ice cream machines and why they're broken. And this has been a meme that's been going on for years now. But lately, there's been a video that posts the real reason why McDonald's machine, ice cream machines don't work. And a lot of it had to do with McDonald's corporate colluding with their longtime partners that make the machines, essentially giving them crappy machines that needed to be fixed so that the company can then use their technicians to fix them and the franchises foot the bills so McDonald's corporate doesn't care about this. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to expand out from this to explain why this situation is something that is a case study for a larger systemic issue. See, it's very easy to look at what McDonald's did as underhanded tactics, something that isn't as what we desire or what we think we want from capitalism, right? We want better uh, products, we want more efficient service, faster things, and this seems to go against that. But it's the very system of capitalism that incentivizes McDonald's and other companies, right, to do things like this. And here's how I so we have this idea that with the with the uh, influx of competition within capitalism within the market and the drive and motivation of profit, we will get innovation and projects progress in society and that's the main way in which society progresses is through this competition for to, to get the, the most attention the most dollar and obviously that drive because it because of profit and profit based society however this enlarges a myth just it's not true and here's why so let's take for example competition in certain conditions and at certain times when a company is small and a business is small being innovative is probably the way they survive. They really only have a way to get big through out-competing and out-maneuvering their opponents. And that can end up being a good thing. However, this competition is a zero-sum game. There are absolute winners, absolute losers. For every first, second, third place, there are hundreds of those that don't make the cut. That being said, because of this way, when a company gets to a certain point, Competition is no longer advantageous, or more specifically, playing the competitive game is no longer gives them advantageous. Whereas when they were smaller, they didn't have a choice. Now they have something to do about it. Now, maintaining what they have is more advantageous than trying to be creative or even having competition in the first place. And I think this is important. There will always be someone who wins at the end of this competition, and there's no incentive for them to maintain this sort of competitive nature or the system to be competitive. And then what you get from that is monopolies. You get monopolies, that's what you get. You get them only and dominating these industries where all these little parent companies are owned by one big corporation. So what you see is that inevitably within competition is the kind of incentive away from innovation. Innovation only exists for a relatively small period of time. And this has a knock-on effect too. This doesn't just exist with monopolies. What happens is because these, these monopolies become trendsetters, um, and when these rules of competition are more well-defined and there are right ways and wrong ways to do things, you'll have most people, most companies, even small ones, follow in the same way. Where they're no longer trying to stand out, they'll more just ride the waves that these the trendsetters make. And this is with any competition. Any competition, you know, in general, will at first have a lot of different ways and creativity ways to do this. Once these rules become more defined and a winner is shown, all the strategies, all the plans, all the all the tactics, all become similar. They become defined and become routine. And this is no different from capitalism. So innovation can't be the result of competition because the end result of competition is always just like a collapsing into one hegemonic system. Now let's move on to profit. Now, I really actually don't know where the idea that profit is how we get like good quality goods or the people wanting or driving for a profit is, is how we get there. Because that doesn't really make any sense. And that's because if you understand that like profit in and of itself and the endless pursuit of profit doesn't actually like 
do anything for progressing society, then you can see how like that being the main goal of any business means that all their tactics, strategies, hiring practice, what gets made, how it gets made, who it goes to, um, that type of quality are all restricted by cost. It's restricted by profit, you know, and when making a better product that helps people and, and pushes society comes up against profit, profit wins every time. Now, this idea that, you know, the consumer choice or buying power is the balance of this, right? Because if people don't want to buy your stuff, then you'll have to lower the price, you'll have to change the product, you can't, you know, you won't be able to do exactly what you want. But the problem with this is there's no real way to, like, prove buyer's choice is a thing. And more importantly, it doesn't really make any sense because when you have the fact that monopolies exist and you pair that with the profit motive, you have the understanding that there is no choice for these buyers to have. There's no choice in the capitalist. Eventually, all that really is choice becomes an illusion because when the competition no longer exists, all the monopolies are going to do is make you have an illusion of choice. And therefore, they have no incentive to do anything with their, pro their products of quality, of quantity, uh, of price. They don't need to incentive to do anything like this because you'll still buy something that they own. They'll still make money from that, and you won't have a choice. So buyer power is just as big enough as a man. The thing is, is that these consequences have go much further than you not being able to have a flurry. Every sector of our life is run by industry, and all in these industries run on the same sense of, of competition plus pro profit motive. And when we understand the issues with that, we can see that that doesn't bode well for anyone when it comes to housing, food, healthcare, and it hasn't bode well for us in the past. The libertarian idea that through the use of market competition and profit motive, we can get to a society where we get cheap, high quality products or like reasonable price products uh, and, best, and the best service because of competition just is that a dream, a, a wet dream at that. But that's the video. Peace. Have a good day. Thank you.